Hello, good night everyone. Okay, so this is gonna be a total hack job. Um, I'll see if I can share this link. Here we go. Uh, two sex guys. I'm just gonna go share this on Facebook and I'll be back. So this might take a little bit to, uh, hang on, got messages coming through here. Welcome, sorry, Done th doing this for the first time guys, so gonna be interesting to see what happens okay so I think we're good all right babe if you want to come do the filming okay here we go alrighty guys so I'm just gonna pop around the other side thanks for joining us guys I thought I'd just do this now I keep it keep it here mate keep it close while you're talking okay. yeah let's keep it close no one needs to see me. Yes, they do. <laughs> Come on. Um, so, guys, I, I just thought I'd do my hot and spicy recipe. recipe considering everyone's in uh, sort of a, a somewhat of an isolation situation at the moment, I thought I'd do something um, and show you guys what I'm doing with my hot and spicy. So, I'm just going to grab the chicken out of the fridge. Now, this was all done last moment. I uh, literally popped down the shops at 9 a.m. this morning to grab some chicken, so it hasn't been an overnight grind, um, but uh, you'll get the idea. It's probably not gonna be as tender as it would be if it was uh, uh, done for 24 hours or overnight. So this has probably only been a couple of hours since he's been in. Okay, so I'm just gonna chuck some plastic gloves on. Now before um, we go ahead, I'm just gonna go through what I've actually put into this here so that's actually a quarter of a cup of frank's hot sauce and depending on how you hot you like it i've actually stuck in a uh two tablespoons of uh, cayenne pepper um if you've got something hotter like reaper powder or something like that go nuts you can go different sort of hot sauce but you don't want to have uh, too much if any sugar in there because that will potentially burn so just remember guys a quarter of a cup of frank's hot sauce you can get the red hot, which is the extra, extra hot one. And I've put two, two tablespoons of cayenne pepper. Again, if you wanna go a bit hotter, go for it. Okay, so I've got my, here we go. Got my chicken that's been sitting in a brine. It is a tablespoon per cup of buttermilk. Um, uh, now, important guys, is to watch out uh, that you use the right sort of salt. If you're using a fine grain salt, like Saxa table salt, you're gonna have it be way too salty, especially if you carry that on into the batter mix or the dredge mix, you're gonna have it be way too salty. So um, this is what I use, sacks of cooking salts, not a paid promotion, um, but this grain size, it's gonna be hard to see with my gloves on, I'll take that off for a second. This grain size is about what you want. Okay, if you guys could see that. So it's actually a bit bigger than table salt, it's probably about double the, double the size of table salt. Now, someone mentioned about kosher salt. Unfortunately, you can get different sized kosher salt as well, so you have to be mindful of that too. So what I'll do, I'm just gonna swing these around for a second. Now, usually I find the ones that have got the crispiest, like the little craggy bits, the really uber duba um, crunchy bits on it, are the ones sort of my second, third, or fourth piece, because the first piece that you do, generally I'll find is uh, it's not as craggy. Uh, it's basically because it hasn't got the bits left in there. Um, now, someone mentioned how many how many uh, bits of thighs, I generally use thighs, how many bits of thighs you can use uh, with uh, my dredge recipe. Generally, I find about, uh, I do four quite often. Generally, I find when you get to, to, after that sort of six to eight, you'll notice that there's a lot of craggy bits in there. So just make sure, like I'm gonna actually, uh, uh, rinse this, not so much rinse this, but I'm gonna actually uh, uh, let some of the excess fall off into this mix now. And uh, you wanna do that on the first one if you're doing more than sort of four to six pieces, but you wanna don't wanna do that every single one. So I'm just dropping a bit of buttermilk in there. I'm gonna find a nice big one for Bundy. Okay, there we go. Now, I've actually, a lot of people been saying that they've been, uh, 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 taking six to eight minutes to cook this. There's no way in hell it should take that long. Just make sure you you double check the temperature of your oil. You want it to be about 350 Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. And also the other thing you want to check for is you want to actually give that a bit of a bash before it goes in. So you want to give the chicken a bit of a bash. Oh, hang on, before I do that. You want to give that chicken a bit of a bash first 
and just make sure that it's nice and even. And if it's nice and even to start off with, just like a steak, if the steak's uneven, it's gonna cook unevenly, the chicken's gonna cook unevenly too. It should only take about four minutes. Okay, so what I do, shut that lid of my computer so it's not making noise. Okay, so as you notice, I've, I've basically gonna let some of these bits of buttermilk go in there. Oh, sorry. Money shot. And then I'm gonna pop that in here. And I'm gonna coat this in my mixture of hot sauce and cayenne pepper. Okay, once I've done that, sorry, I got the misses on the foot with the buttermilk. Once I've done that, that goes straight into here. Now, I see a lot of guys and the coating hasn't stuck. And so some, some people say you let it rest for a bit and so it gets that wet appearance on it. I don't bother. Um, but you really want to press that in. You want to really want to make sure that there's plenty of coating covering that. Okay. And you want to really get it into the... Sorry for the misses. Um, uh, sort of uh, the shaky camera work. I actually got buttermilk all over the missus foot. Okay. So see how I've turned that over? Now you want to make sure that's all fully well and truly coated. Okay. And so if you're asking for the dredge mix, you can always, uh, instead of, you look at my other, uh, my most, most recent recipe, what you want to do, if you want it a bit hotter and spicier, take out the Mexican chili, right? Notice how many times I'm actually flipping it and doing this. Take out the Mexican chili, take out the paprika and just put cayenne pepper or cayenne pepper and, or, or whatever you've got, reaper powder, scorpion powder, whatever you, tickles your fancy. And the reason why I turn it over a couple of times is you'll notice different bits that you'll miss. And as you do this, you'll actually push the craggy bits into it. You can actually see there's bits starting to form on top of it. And if you have a look, see all these bits in there? That's the bits that you're actually pushing into the chicken and you're making it stick. Okay. And now quite often what I do is I just put that on a, a little uh, a bit of baking paper or a rack. Take that off. Uh, put that on a bit of baking paper or a rack uh, for the time being and then do the rest of them. But we're gonna go straight in the deep fry now. So Kaz, if you want to come around over here, I'll take these gloves off. Okay guys, so I'm noticing a, a lot of instances where you guys aren't getting those full on craggy bits. Generally that's because your oil's too cold. Um, now I use peanut oil, whatever tickles your fancy, um, but I use peanut oil, I find that the best. And so when you stick this in, you might, might want to have to zoom in on this. As soon as you stick that in, that should start to fizzle. I'm not sure if you guys can see that there, guys. But you can see that satay skewer fizzling away. Okay? So that's what you want. Okay? Now we'll stick this in. Okay, so you want to shake all that excess off. There's a little bit that I've missed. Shake all that excess off. So remember 350 Fahrenheit or about 400 and, sorry, 350 Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. A bit more flour on there. And when you put it in, you wanna put it in away from yourself. Hang on, there's another bit that I've missed. Shake it off again, another bit that I've missed. Shake it off again. Okay, now I'm gonna pop that in. Okay. And you should see those crunchy bits start to come up literally straight away. Mm. Okay. All right, guys, I'll just take the camera off the missus for a moment. She's gonna need to take that back off me when I Put the sandwich together though. She's shaking her head. 
So you can actually see, look at those bits sticking out in the aisle. Now you'll pretty much know, I haven't even set a timer now, but you'll pretty much know when that's ready because the oil, uh, see how she's fizzing furiously? You'll actually notice that that dies down. As Soon as that dies down, I'll usually give it another 30 seconds and that's me done. So I don't know how guys are getting six and eight minutes with thigh fillets unless they're off, uh, Gigantic chooks, bloody dinosaur chooks. Now it's hard to see from, uh, on my camera, it's actually hard to see what's going on because there's a little message on my screen that's come up. You can start to hear that, that sort of not sizzling as much now. But what will happen is you'll get to a point where she stops sizzling or it sizzles a hell of a lot less, and then she'll st actually start sizzling again. That's moisture coming out of the chicken. You don't want to get to that point. So yeah, really important, guys. I've noticed a, a couple of people saying that uh, the uh, the uh, the chicken's too salty. So really crucial, guys, is the grain size that you guys are using. Uh, I use sacks of cooking salt. If you're going to use something finer or something that you ground down, you're going to have to drop that by about a quarter. So really important, guys. Uh, grain size is crucial. And don't, don't just use that uh, for your brine. You need to make sure you, you're consistent the whole way through with uh, the dredge, with anything where I've said use a certain amount of salt. You need to make sure that that, that amount of salt uh, is relevant to the grain size because obviously something that's a smaller grain size you're going to fit a hell of a lot more in a tablespoon than something that's uh, quite a big grain size so you can hear that's really died down someone said can they order takeaway now feel free to chuck messages through and ask questions <laughs> can you order takeaway i don't know um uh when when all this crap is all over I'm going to throw a shindig and everyone's welcome around. Uh, I've just bought an acreage, so yeah, we can uh, have a big cook up there. So I'd say that's pretty close to ready. Now, just when, you, when you're doing this, sorry, I'm shaking a bit, turn that on the side so that the oil drains off, okay? So I don't know how long has that been, probably about three and a half minutes, maybe not even four minutes. So it's crucial to getting delivery to Northern. <laughs> hey, I need to come up and see you. We'll have to do a trade with some, uh, with some cheese and fried chicken. But you see that? That's, there's no bloody, uh, no, no, no faffing around there. That was the first one that went in. It was, it's just all about the technique, guys. And someone say, you know, your, 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 your recipes, uh, your video is 15 minutes long, but there's reason for that. There's technique involved in it. And if anyone's read one of my barbecue posts, uh, you'll know it probably takes half an hour to read a barbecue post. So I'm just gonna let that sit there for a bit. Kaz, if you can come back and take the camera, I'm gonna toast these buns. So just watch guys as well, how much spice you add to stuff. I'm gonna pass that back to Kaz. I'm gonna toast these buns. Now Bundy, I usually roll with pickles. But Bundy doesn't like pickles. I've tried to get him to like pickles. He hates pickles. So we're just going to toast those a bit. I've only got brioche today. Usually we'll do up the milk buns, but I'm actually making pizza later on today. So uh, uh, I've already uh, worn out my, uh, my brownie points with the missus and uh, baking the milk buns the other day. So we're making, making pizzas tonight and uh, yeah, I think it would have been a, a bit of a stretch for me to get her to make uh, the buns for today as well. So I've just gone down to the local and got brioche. Not usually a big fan of brioche. Um, not that, it goes all right with, goes good with chicken, but I find there is a great variance with brioche. And what can actually happen is that a lot of them aren't, haven't got much integrity to them and they don't hold 
uh, terribly well. And when you eat, uh, the uh, the uh, the bun often falls apart. So if you want to come over here, babe. I'm just going to, what I'm going to do. Okay. Right. Oh, so these barbecue, oh, I forgot. Here we go. People ask me the paprika I use that smells like bacon. I'm pretty sure that's the one. I found this empty container. Uh, Hoyt's, I think I get it from Woolies. Uh, the Mexican chili powder that I use is the Master Foods one. Okay, now I'm just gonna grab a spoon. Also guys, one of these set of uh, tongs will come in handy. Now what I'm going to do, if you have a look at one of my first fried chicken recipes, you'll actually see, uh, oh, that's going to fall apart. It's amazing how much the buttermilk tenderizes. That's only been in there a couple of hours. Okay. So, you know, in the restaurants, they're going to be dunking it in this oil. In this situation, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brush it on. So this is uh, basically just uh, a mix of uh, the oil out of the fryer. And then I've also got um, some of the Mexican chilies powder, powder, garlic powder, uh, cayenne pepper, uh, lard comes in really handy. Uh, that, that will actually give it a real nice finish. Butter, and then I'm gonna get this Mexican chili powder. Just gonna sprinkle that over the top now. I've got a ghost chili one. Uh, one that's uh, from ghost chilies when I used to grow chilies. I smoked them and I ground them up and I put those uh, into a spice mix uh, with some scorpions and reapers. Uh, I really like habaneros, that gives a real fruity flavour. Things like fatali, I used to be a big fan of fatali, used to grow them often. Okay, so let's stick some bunny. You're getting slaw whether you like it or not, sorry mate. Um, where are we? So we'll pop on, two sticks. Okay. So we're gonna pop some slaw on the bottom. This is actually from last night. Um, I cooked brisket last night, if anyone wants to see that, it's on the Barbecue Club of Australia page. Free plug, I'm gonna post on Pitmaster University later. Okay, wash the hands. this on top. Oh, so the missus said, oh geez, and that's, oh cheese, no, no. Not rolling with cheese, Bundy likes cheese. I actually got abused for putting cheese on my chicken burger on a post I did in the States. They, they think it's sacrilege. So I made this chipotle mayo the chipotle mayo is basically uh, mayo, chipotle powder, barbecue rub, and pickle juice. So one way or another you're getting pickle juice bundy. And what you might want to do, just whack that on fairly liberally, and then pop that on top. Okay, so you can see the, the brioche, it's come down here. It's a, sorry, excuse there. It's a bit squishy. Hasn't got that good structure to it. Okay, I'm gonna give the camera back to the missus. I'm gonna grab myself a drink and take this out to Bungie. Okay. Oh, someone turned off the lights. Yeah, don't do, you don't need lights, it's two seconds. Hello. Bloody dodgy Wi Fi. Say hello, Bundy. G'day. How you going, guys? Alrighty, guys, say hello. Angus and Ella. Alrighty, guys. Gonna 
maintain our social distancing stuff and I'm gonna have a beer with Bundy. Alrighty, you gonna eat it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that, I think you saw that, didn't you? <laughs> Sorry guys, now I'm doing the camera work. Cheers. Looks pretty good. Gonna be happy with that. Yeah, no pickles for you, mate. Drive by service, just pickle juice. Yeah, just pickle juice. Good. I think it's probably gonna fall apart with that brioche, mate. Yeah. Oh, the guys, there's a bit of a technique to eat of it when you've got such overhang. Usually what I'll do, I'll bite the chicken, right? Like Bundy's doing then, and then I'll sort of get in halfway and then I'll turn it around and bite the chicken out the other end and then uh, yeah I'll finish the rest of the burger now brioche is probably going to fall apart in this situation um, what I'll usually do as well another thing is once you've gotten halfway through if it's uh, really eaten through the bun that you've got um, you can actually flip it over and uh, yeah it'll make it make life a hell of a lot easier Now, I can't get too close. All right, guys, if anyone's got any questions, you post them now. I'm going to enjoy a beer and answer your questions. That one's a winner. Cheers, mate. Cheers to Corona. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Cheers everyone. All right, that's pretty much it, guys. I might as well log off now. Um, if you've got any questions. Oh, actually, hang on. I'm gonna go back inside, add a couple of things I had to mention. So i leave you to it, Bundy. Probably rude to watch you eat. I got a couple of questions I had written down. What's in the dredge? Okay. Um, that one I actually changed it up. I'll actually grab you, give you guys the recipe now. I'm, like, what I want you guys to do is once you've got, sorry, excuse the mess. Once you guys have got uh, all the foundations right, you're getting crispy, juicy, you know, it's not looking burnt, you're getting that really craggy looking crust. Once you've sort of got that foundation, I want you guys to start experimenting. And so this is where it gets really exciting, you know, you know, I don't want to be, and then I want you guys to play with, with the flavours yourself. So what I did with this one, excuse me, I'm going to try read off this at the same time. Hang on. Here we go. I'll swap the camera around so we're not watching Bunny. We'll let him relax a bit. Okay. Uh, before this bit of paper runs away. Okay, so let's have a look. Might get, might get in the shade here. Maybe Asian, but I've got fair skin like my mum. Used to have the occasional red hair pop through, now it's just bloody white. Okay, so here we go guys. So for, just re recall for the marinade, it is, uh, here we go. We're gonna have old mate with the bloody whippersnipper going. Australia. Um, so for the marinade, uh, two cups of buttermilk, two tablespoons of cooking salt, uh, just remember to use less if it's table salt or fine grain salt. Marinate for 24 hours. Then into that, I put I put it into that uh, mix of one quarter of a cup of Frank's hot sauce with uh, two tablespoons of cay cayenne pepper or whatever you guys want. Go hotter, go less. You can mix that up with paprika. You can mix it up with that Mexican chili powder. Um, then for the dredge, for this one, it's totally different. Um, well, not totally, but... That base is still the same because we've got that crunch that we're looking for. Um, so the dredge is one and a half cups of plain flour. Just watch, don't use baker's flour because I made that mistake. Um, oh, my beer fell over. Anyway, there goes half the beer. Um, and then uh, half, one and a half cups of plain flour, half a cup of corn flour, uh, two teaspoons of black pepper, uh, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of cayenne pepper, two teaspoons of chicken salt. Now I use uh, 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 
I used I, I used I usually use uh, the 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 Vegeta brand chicken stock, but I, sorry, chicken salt. I usually use uh, the Vegeta brand chicken stock, but I've been using chicken salt lately and avoiding the stock uh, uh, in more more recent recipes. Uh, sometimes I find if you guys put too many spices in there, it'll actually burn and it'll actually screw not only with the texture but with the flavour. Um, so I actually put poor Woodham's chicken uh, chicken salt in there, and it's got some Reaper powder in there just to give it some extra bit of kick and bit of bit of oomph. Um, and also I put a teaspoon of ginger. Now this guy's is is a bit new for you guys that are watching and also a teaspoon of baking powder and so that's basically the dredge recipe and okay so just some couple of things i had uh written down so yeah again i use peanut oil that's that's my oil of choice a lot of people using canola vegetable oil someone even mentioned cottonseed oil uh thing with cottonseed oil uh it's used a lot in Chinese cooking, but it's renowned for making people sterile. So if you want to have kids, uh, maybe maybe lay off that if you're eating a lot of fried chicken. Um, now, generally, I'll only top it up maybe 100 mils every cook, and I'm usually cooking four to six thighs every cook, sometimes more. Um, if you're having to top it up anymore, I'd suggest you've probably got your oil that's too um, uh, not, not hot enough. So... If you can, uh, and if that satay skewer is fizzling and sizzling away, you're pretty much there, but you might want to get a thermometer just to double check that you're, you're not under 350 and you're at 325 or 300, because it will fizzle after a while at those temps, but it won't just fizzle as furiously. Um, how many thighs per recipe? Um, generally, I'll, again, so I'll use generally four to six thighs. Just watch that you don't use too many uh, thighs for that amount of buttermilk, because what you, is that you sniffling, Bundy? a bit of heat there yeah. um so just watch how much chicken you put in to that amount of buttermilk because you want the buttermilk to be reasonably thick um uh so it uh, the coating sticks to it what you'll notice if it's thin um you won't have as thick a, a crust on it um uh okay yes so just another thing once you've gotten things sus i want you to get away from the recipe and use the base and have a real play with it. Now, if someone said they doubled the spice to make it spicier, you've got to really watch that you don't burn the spices when you're doing that. So I'd actually recommend uh, that you uh, do that method where I put it in the hot sauce and then with some cayenne pepper instead. Um, and I think that's pretty much it, guys. Um, thanks for all those who are watching. Please do us a favor and like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the little uh, the bell next to it and that'll get, give you alerts when we do another post. I'm sure you'll see it on Perth Burger Hunters uh, or elsewhere. But thanks for watching. Uh, I'm gonna have, have a beer with my mate. We're uh, probably two meters away for those, for those out there. Um, but yeah, gonna have a beer out the front and uh, happy Easter all. Uh, if you've got any more questions, uh, please ask more than happy to help and share. Uh, again, it's not my recipe. This is your guys' recipe. You guys inspired it. Uh, I don't want to own this. Uh, it's Perth Burger Hunter's chicken, fried chicken recipe, guys. So, um, yeah. Fair play to you guys. I'm going to have a beer now. Have a good long weekend. I don't even know how to get out of this now. There we go.